Hello everyone and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards and in this lesson number 196 we'll take a look at modularity and how it applies in different architectural styles. You can get a listing of all the lessons I do at Software Architecture Monday at my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. There's lots of various architectural styles that support a level of architectural modularity, including monolithic architectures. Architectural modularity gives us a lot of advantages in architecture. Uh, the first advantage is maintainability, uh, the ease in which we can actually apply changes and make changes to that system. Also, testability the ease of and completeness of testing. Architectural modularity also helps support deployability. Uh, this is the ceremony involved with deploying our software, the frequency in which we can deploy, and also the overall risk of deploying our software. Architectural modularity also supports a level of reliability as well in the system, and also fault tolerance. Uh, there's a lot of other aspects, architectural characteristics, that modularity gives us. Also, things like scalability and elasticity. So as we can see, architectural modularity is pretty important in software architecture. What I'd like to do is show you a tour, a journey, of all these various architectural styles and how each supports a level of modularity. Now, modularity is typically um, breaking apart or organizing our software into various parts. Granularity is about the size of those parts, and these two things are very much different. So what I'm going to do in our journey is produce some star ratings for you so that we can see how each of these compare in their level of modularity. And let's start with the modular monolith. Uh, the modular monolith I spoke about in lesson 159. And this does, in fact, support a level of architectural modularity. Um, I gave it two stars out of five. And so one's the lowest level, five is the highest level. I, I gave it a two, uh, mostly because modularity and the modular monolith is supported through what's called domain partitioning of the architecture. Even though it's a monolithic deployment, the fact that we delineate modules in terms of usually a domain or subdomain uh, generally means that these modules are usually coarse-grained. They don't have to be, but usually are because they do represent a domain or subdomain in the system. Architectural modularity is supported because of this kind of delineation and boundaries surrounding each domain or subdomain. Now, modules uh, within a modular monolith uh, can be kind of, well, I'll say designed or deployed uh, through just code delineation. And in other words, through a namespace or a package structure identifying that particular module in a unified code base. But they can also be implemented through things like artifacts, like jar files or DLLs uh, that come together in a single deployment unit. Now, another mo monolith uh, that also supports a level of modularity is the microkernel or plug-in architecture, uh, what I talked about in lesson 160. Microkernel architecture gets its level of modularity through the use of plug-in components. Uh, these are additional features, uh, additional functions. They could be adapters. There's a lot of configuration uh, changes, uh, a lot of uses for plug-in components. Now, I also gave the microkernel architecture a le level two, basically, two stars for modularity, uh, meaning it, it is a monolith, and so it does still have a single deployment unit, which cuts down the number of stars. However, um, here, these plug-in components are typically fine-grained. Um, now, I only gave it two stars because 
Typically, this level of modularity is not within the core system itself, but rather these particular plugin components. And so it has kind of a specialized aspect of modularity. Well, there is one candidate here, architecture style, uh, that outshines all others in terms of its support for modularity. And that happens to be microservices. Microservices architecture gets its level of modularity from the single purpose, separately deployed nature of a service combined with the concept of a bounded context. Now, I gave modularity rating here for microservices a five star rating because of the fine grained nature of this level of modularity. We have modules essentially and can have at a function level uh, within microservices, giving it the highest level of modularity there is. I also gave it five stars for another reason, uh, because typically with microservices, we also carry with it micro front ends. And so we have modularity, and not only at the service level, but also at the user interface level. So moving along in our journey and kind of sticking now with the distributed architectures, uh, we come to service-based architecture. Uh, now, I gave service-based architecture uh, three stars on modularity. It certainly, as a distributed architecture, is much more modular than a monolith like plugin architecture or microkernel or the modular monolith. Service-based architecture gets its level of modularity from what's called a domain service. Uh, this service typically, not always, doesn't have to, but typically encompasses uh, an entire domain or subdomain of the system. As such, the modularity level here is typically coarse-grained when we start talking about the granularity, the size of those particular parts, in other words, these services. So don't be dismayed by the three stars. It's still good in its level of modularity. Not as good as microservices, but definitely better than a monolithic application. Now let's move on to event-driven architecture, which has a very interesting story. Event-driven architecture relies on asynchronous communication between its services and usually uh, the user interface and gets its modularity through event processors which are separately deployed. Now I gave this level of modularity uh, or, or event-driven architecture I should say uh, a rating of four, four stars out of five for modularity. I only gave it four stars because the granularity is variable. Uh, there's nothing in event-driven architecture that states what that event processor can be. It could be a single purpose function, just like microservices, or it could be an entire domain service, just like service-based architecture. So because of that variability, it's really hard to put a hard rating on modularity. So I put it basically between kind of service-based and also microservices. Now, I also gave it four stars for one other reason, because typically when we talk about modularity in architecture, we also talk about how coupled things are together. The more coupled those parts are of a system, the less modular it's going to be. There is inherent in event-driven architecture a lot of dynamic decoupling. Now I say dynamic because we're still coupled by contracts. If I change a contract, I start breaking services unless I version that contract or have other services change. And so because of these kind of factors, I think a rating of four stars is very fair for event-driven architecture. Well, there's one other architecture style in our journey to talk about when we talk about architectural modularity, and that is space-based architecture. Another difficult one to determine the star ratings on. Now, space-based architecture gets its modularity because it is a distributed architecture, and modularity is realized through separately deployed processing units. 
uh, things we call services these days. Um, back in the day, <laughs> uh, way back in the late 90s, um, they were termed processing units. Um, however, it's like a service. Because the granularity in space-based architecture is also variable, I gave it three stars for modularity. But I also gave it three stars because it is a technically partitioned architecture, which means with space-based, and I would encourage you to look at lesson 166, because there I show um, data readers and data writers, uh, data pumps. And so each part of a function is broken apart into different pieces, which is why it's really a technically partitioned architecture. Uh, to make a change in a particular domain or subdomain, I have to go and change possibly different kinds of artifacts. And there you have it, everyone. Kind of the, the architecture styles that do support a level of modularity. Again, giving us uh, increasing amounts of testability, deployability, uh, maintainability, overall agility, scalability, fault tolerance, and overall reliability. Well, so this has been Lesson 196, Modularity and Architecture Styles. Uh, please stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.